drones have become Washington's weapon of choice in the so-called war on terror. Both Democrats and Republicans have been swearing by them for years. Conventional air power or missiles are far less precise than drones. No one is going to be struck by a Hellfire missile from a drone that is not an enemy combatant. Sometimes you have to do very tough things with terrorists, like use drone strikes. Simply put, these strikes have saved lives. But what if drones do more harm than good? create more terrorists than they kill. What if drones cause blowback? In 2010, a Pakistani-born US citizen, Faisal Shahzad, was arrested for attempting a terrorist attack in Times Square. His car bomb, had it gone off, could have killed hundreds of innocent people. We are very lucky. Thanks to uh, alert New Yorkers and professional police officers, we avoided what could have been a very deadly event. At his trial, Shazad was asked by the judge why he wanted to kill civilians, including children, in the middle of New York City. Well, the drone hits in Afghanistan and Iraq, he replied. They don't see children. They don't see anybody. They kill women, children. They kill everybody. They're killing all Muslims. He went on to add, I'm part of the answer to the US terrorizing the Muslim nations. I'm avenging the attacks because the Americans only care about their people. This is the very definition of blowback. A US covert operation, in this case, drone strikes abroad, provoking attacks on the US at home. And it isn't just Faisal Shahzad, Omar Farouk Abdul the underwear bomber, and Jokar Zanayev, the Boston bomber, both also claim to be retaliating against, among other things, US drone strikes in Muslim majority countries. Now you might say, they're terrorists. Of course they're gonna say that. Of course they're gonna blame drone strikes. But it isn't just them. More and more top US generals are pointing out how drone strikes make us less, not more safe. General Stanley McChrystal, former head of Joint Special Operations Command, or JSOC, and dubbed the terrorist hunter, has said average Americans do not appreciate how drone strikes are hated on a visceral level, even by people who've never seen one or seen the effects of one. In fact, General McChrystal has even said that careless use of drone strikes could result in a suicide bomb in Central Park, because that's what they, the terrorists, can respond with. A 2014 report co-authored by General John Abizade, former head of CENTCOM, pointed out in a section on blowback how civilian casualties from drone strikes can anger whole communities and become a potent recruiting tool for terrorist organizations. And then there's General Michael Flynn. You might not know that long before his 24-day stint as hawkish national security advisor to President Trump, he was head of intelligence for JSOC, tracking Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and Iraq. And this is what he said to me about drones and blowback in 2015. The drone strikes, for example, many have argued they create more terrorists than they kill. The night raids in Afghanistan, I, I many have argued yeah, they I, create more terrorists I, I than, they, than they get. I don't disagree with that. When you drop a bomb from a drone, you're investing, you're, you are going to cause more damage than you're going to cause good. It isn't just top generals either. Former CIA counterterrorism chief Robert Grenier has admitted that drone strikes are creating more enemies than we are removing from the battlefield. That's blowback. Even some former drone operators themselves have pointed out that drone strikes have only fueled the feelings of hatred that ignited terrorism in groups like ISIS, while also serving as a fundamental recruitment tool similar to Guantanamo Bay. Again, blowback. It's no laughing matter, though someone forgot to tell that to President Obama. The Jonas Brothers are here. They're out there somewhere. Sasha and Malia are huge fans. But uh, boys don't get any ideas. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. President Obama joking about killing kids with predator drones. Well, here are some actual kids, not called the Jonas Brothers, who were killed by Obama's drone strikes. In fact, a study by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism found that drone strikes in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia since 2004 may have killed up to 1,400 civilians, including more than 200 children. But what if drone blowback is all a myth? That's what some hawkish contrarians have suggested in recent years. The Pakistanis in the tribal areas don't mind being droned, they say, using survey data that one of those contrarians himself admits is not statistically representative of the entire population. Thanks. Now, I could cite UK government-funded survey data showing two out of every three residents of Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas consider drone attacks to be never justified. But rather than trade stats, 
I'd prefer to let the people on the ground speak for themselves. In fact, one Yemeni activist came to Congress in 2013 to warn America about blowback from drones in his country. Well, when they think of America, they think of the terror they feel from the drones that hover over their heads ready to fire missiles at any time. What the violent militants had previously failed to achieve, one drone strike accomplished in an instant. And Pakistan's youngest Nobel Peace Laureate said pretty much the same thing to President Obama in the Oval Office, as she later revealed at a conference in 2014. When it comes to drone attacks, it is true that in drone attacks, two or three terrorists are being killed. But along with that, civilians are also targeted. Terrorists are killed because of drone attacks, but terrorism is increased and terrorism spread more and more. But what does Malala know about radicalization and counterterrorism? It's not as if she was, you know, shot in the head by the Taliban. Look, drone strikes produce blowback. They provide a motivation for terrorists who want to attack the West. They drive people on the ground in places like Pakistan and Yemen into the arms of extremist groups. And some studies suggest that even when drone strikes seem to work by taking out the leaders of terrorist groups, they only make those groups more radicalized and more violent. So you'll be delighted to discover that President Trump has given secret permission to the CIA to ramp up drone strikes. In fact, Trump has been dispatching the drones at more than four times the pace that Obama did. And if the recent history of drone strikes teaches us anything, it's that violence begets violence. We can't say we weren't warned. <laughs>